uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Anybody got any comments, questions on the minutes? Anybody want to move or second the minutes? Councillor Harper, move. Second. I saw Councillor Maycock first to no, second. No. I'll sign those as a true record. Has anybody got any de declarations of interest? No. So we move to applications. <coughs> Just one application on the agenda this evening, which is number 0324 2021. Outline application for 14 dwellings, including affordable housing and public open space, off Overwoods Road in Hockley. Uh, Sally, I'll hand over to you initially. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yes, I'm going to hand over to Ryan to do the presentation for this application. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just to begin with, just uh, for the minutes, there's just one alteration to condition number 14 since the agenda has been published. More of a typo than anything else, and the condition reads that no development falling within Part 1, Classes A or B of Schedule 2 of the Town and Country Planning General Permitted Development Order 1995, or any order revoking or reenacting um, that order with without modification shall be carried out. Where it says 1995, that should just be altered to 2015, because that piece of legislation legislation has been updated and it's just from our back office system but the back office system has also now been changed so that won't happen again um, so that's just the one alteration to the report since it was published so as the chair says this is an application for um, uh, up to 14 dwellings um, I'm just going to take this opportunity to remind members that it's an application outline application with all matters still reserved um, as it states on the government website, an application for outline planning permission allows for a decision on the general principles of how a site can be developed. Outline planning permission may be granted subject to conditions requiring subsequent approval of one or more reserved matters. So if this application were to be approved, uh, there will be subsequent applications and that will depend on which reserved matter it is applied for. A reserved matter relates to access, appearance, landscaping, layout and scale. So there could be one application for all of them or multiple reserved matters applications. Uh, given the size of the site, it's likely to be a major scheme, so those reserved matters applications are more than likely to be presented to a future planning committee. Um, looking at the location plan, which you should be able to see has got the red and blue lines on, um, it shows the site boundary outlined in red and also identifies the approximate positions of the electricity pylon, in, which is the grey box in the middle of the site, and the grey line is the approximate position of overhead cables. Um, the land outlined in blue shows land in similar or same ownership, but it does not form part of this application. The land outlined in blue is actually an existing access track serving the existing properties on Overwoods Road to the left of where the access is going to be. Uh, east of the site, heading towards Trinity Road, um, obviously that has uh, the site will have good access to the M42 uh, and the A5. South of the site, on the opposite side of Overwoods Road, is where the protected green belt land uh, is located. We've received approximately 60 comments, um, a small number in support, the majority of which are uh, objecting to the application, including an objection from Councillor Clements as ward member. Uh, the objections are mainly focused around impact on highway, which um, increasing traffic and highway safety, loss of green space, impact on biodiversity, and impact on existing properties in terms of loss of privacy um, and light, etc. Uh, full details are available on the website and indeed in my report. Uh, the next image is an aerial image um, of the site which shows the relationship with existing neighbouring residential schemes. You have the existing terrace properties on Overwoods Road uh, to the left of where the proposed access is going to be. The, la the larger Tamar Road estate to the north and then more recently you've got newer properties on Swallowhurst which is to the east of the site as well approximately. I think it was uh, 21 or 22 dwellings in there. Uh, with the first image, um, which you can see the electricity pylon at the top of the picture, this is um, the current position of where the proposed access is going to be. Um, the electricity pylon is actually a good reference point when we look at the plans later on, um, because the access point is underneath the overhead cables, um, so it's good when you look at the plans that you can see those as a reference point, and you'll see them shortly. Uh, the next images are taken from within the site, 
The first is looking north towards the electricity pylon and indeed the Tamar Road estate beyond. You can just make out one of the, the house roofs in the distance, which is located on uh, Teen, I believe. Uh, the second image is from the rough location point looking east towards Swallowhurst and in the direction of uh, Trinity Road. Um, and you can see there with the electricity pylon quite, being quite a prominent feature within the site. Um, the pictures demonstrate that the site is actually quite a pleasant green space and I've walked around it myself. Um, towards the south of the site, Overwards Road is quite well managed. Someone's clearly mowing the grass on a regular basis. A couple of the residents' locality have got some uh, furniture out there uh, believed to be with the owner's permission. The rest of the site is more longer um, grass and brambles and considerably more overgrown uh, as you get towards Tamar Road. So the application, one of the uh, main consideration points um, is actually in relation to the access. Um, you can see on the picture there, although it's difficult, I would have liked to have zoomed in on the presentation, that this is where the proposed access is going to be. Um, the dotted lines show the position of the overhead cables and they're at the side with the single grain line, the central cables connecting to the top of the electricity pylon. So you can see there where the access is approximately directly under where the overhead cables are going to be. Uh, this level of detail isn't normally required for an outline application, however after consultation with the County Highways Department, further information was requested to accurately show that an access could be provided uh, in accordance with the uh, required visibility displays. The visibility displays have been calculated on a seven-day speed survey. Um, local uh, members may be aware that the speed limit changes quite close to where the access is from 30 to 50 miles an hour. Uh, so a larger visibility display was required by the County Council and that access plan demonstrates that it can be achieved. But the access will result in the loss of one protected tree. Um, if you can make out on the plan, it's the green dotted line is skims the location this is based on topographical survey so it's as accurate as you can get um, it skims the location of where the trunk of the tree is so it was therefore indicated that one of those trees would need to be removed in order for the access to be provided uh, we have consulted the borough council's tree officer he hasn't raised any significant objections to the loss of one of the protected trees because additional planting will be required and that level of detail will need to be submitted at a later reserve matters application um, additional conditions have also been imposed to protect the remaining trees there as much as possible. They will be required to submit further information to show how those trees are going to be protected. On the next slide, you should be able to see, uh, if I've got that right, it should be uh, an illustrative master plan. If you can see there, I don't know if this is the plan that you'll be looking at. Can you see that plan? You're looking at that plan. It shows... Approximately 14 units, uh, well, 14 units with three affordable units in there, um, with public open space and a footpath running through the middle of the site. This is proposed to connect into the surrounding residential estates, mainly Tamar Road, uh, providing access to the existing public transport network and nearby public open spaces, including the local nature reserve, I think it's uh, designated as L uh, NR2, and the local plan, and that's accessed via Freezy Lane. Uh, I believe that the plan shows a logical approach to the restriction imposed by the existing electricity infrastructure. All of the residential units are located outside of the 30 metre easement zone, um, utilising the land that is restricted against certain types of development and planting, making good use of, available, uh, of the land available to them, with the open space underneath the overhead cables. Uh, this is similar to other existing residential schemes within Tamworth, such as Tamar Road right next door, and um, councillors may be more familiar with Buckingham Road as well, where there's footpaths that go under the electricity pylons there. Western Power have been consulted as part of the application um, and they have raised no significant objections other than concern where there's an in, um, on the plan towards the north of the site there's an indicative pond there um, to do with the SUD system uh, they've raised concerns with possible bird strikes on the overhead cables which could lead to power outages again that level of detail will need to be discussed at the reserve matters phase um, moving on to um, oh sorry that's the last slide there so Furthermore, other notable external bodies that have been consulted have raised no objections. Um, members will be aware it's quite close to HS2, uh, the proposed route there. It, the site is outside 
of the safeguarding zone for HS2. They have not raised um, any significant objections, although they have requested an informative be um, put on any approval if it was granted to note that any future residents wouldn't be able to make a claim against them about noise. The informative tells them that the noise level during the construction will exceed the statutory noise level, but HS2 is now in the public realm. That information can be found out. The developers did do pre-application with them, um, and they were just a bit disappointed that there was no sort of detail submitted as part of the application, but they stress that it is outside of the safeguarding zone. Um, We've also consulted the British Pipeline Agency because there is a pipeline uh, further to the west of the site. Again, no objections have been raised. Uh, we've consulted Staffordshire County Council Ecology uh, because there will be ecology implications on the site and they have requested that conditions be imposed for further surveys to demonstrate exactly what ecology is there. Uh, I believe focusing on reptiles and bat emergence from some of the more mature trees. Um, it's important to remember that this site has no formal allocation within the local plan. Um, whilst local residents have raised concern with the loss of green space, it's not allocated as public open space and it remains private land to which access could be restricted other than to the statutory undertaker um, serving the electricity pylon. They would have a way leave most likely on the site and I believe residents have had access to it because the owner wouldn't want to restrict the electricity provider getting in there. Um, so this is a proposal for outline um, planning approval with all matters reserve. Um, it comprises a sustainable form of development on land not allocated within the local plan. The proposal demonstrates a residential scheme, the principle of which accords with the relevant policies of the Tamworth local plan and the national planning policy framework. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ryan. Very nice for your first meeting. Um, have we got any? Uh, we haven't got a speaker on this item, so uh, we move to questions. Has anybody got any questions, Councillor Bailey? Just on the um, around the habitat, actually, I've got a question around the survey because I, I noticed that potentially there could be lizards or etc. There. So, at what point is there a survey carried out on the area? Yeah, it, the condition from the ecologist is prior to commencement of development. They are required to submit further surveys um, and subject to it being this application being approved, that condition will be imposed and we will consult with the ecologist again when those further surveys come in. Thank you. Yeah, yeah go for it. So Councilman. if during that survey, if obviously they do find there's a habitat there, obviously lizards are struggling, aren't they, mm -hmm. at the minute, um, what would happen in, in that scenario? The surveys would have to identify mitigation measures um, in order to how they're going to be protect or, if needed, relocated if it was great crested newts or something along those lines. But we would have to seek the specialist advice from the ecologist. So the, sorry, what would be re relocated? The, the, the buildings? No, the newts, potentially. Okay. Um, that That's down to what they find, obviously, that the, the surveys themselves will need to identify whether they're present on site including the bats as well there was an emergent survey requested I believe. yeah because i noticed that in there there's a, a you know that pond but obviously a pond would then detract from the lizards as well at the same time but okay all right thank you thank you. councillor pritchard next thank you mr chair um a couple of questions Sorry. The, the first question would be around the number of properties. We've seen so many developments recently whereby they say they're going to build X properties and then we end up building X plus Y properties. Are we going to actually stick to the proposal from the, the uh, developer or will they be coming to us to say at a future date, oh, we want to change this and we're going to put 30 properties on this site and we're going to turn it into a, another little, uh, I, I, I don't know, a modern estate, uh, high density. The second question is the carbuncle in the middle of the estate. I can remember many years ago uh, there was a carbuncle on Stony Delph. Now that got taken down. Would it be impossible for that to happen if we're having people living that close to it, living around it? Uh, not particularly worried about bird strikes because I don't see birds lying in the field anyway. Um, but 
seriously, that's let, let's go for quality. And if we can do things to to improve the whole lot, having said that, it's nice green space. So, thanks, Councillor Pritchard. Ryan, please. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, good questions. Uh, the density has been calculated and is in accordance with the local plan policy. Um, it has been restricted because of the electricity pile on itself. Um, so yes, the 14 houses are in line with the policy. Uh, we can't predict whether there are going to be alterations in the future. And unfortunately, the electricity pile and whether that's been removed, that's outside of the, of the applicant's control and down to Western Power. Uh, obviously, they are the statutory undertakers. And indeed, we have some being replaced and relocated in the borough at the moment. Um, but that, unfortunately, is outside the control of the planning system, realistically. Thanks, Ryan. Is that OK? Excellent. Councillor Greatrix, please. Mike, 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 Mike. <laughs> is there a difference? Thank you. No, so uh, a protected tree is protected by a tree preservation order. A tree preservation order is the larger legal mechanism of how a tree is protected, and then within that order, order it will detail the individual trees that are protected, whether they, they, they could be individual woodland or an area. Um, so it's a protected tree by a tree preservation order, I, thi uh, I think, from 2019. Thanks, Ryan. So we're able to do that for a, a private developer, but people can't even trim a protected tree in some cases. So why are they being allowed to get rid of this tree then? doesn't seem right. Yeah, so a tree preservation order is protected where you will require planning permission to do any works. People can apply individually for those works, or indeed the legislation says a protected tree can be considered works to it, or its removal can be considered as part of a planning application. That is one of the ways in which uh, tre protected trees can be uh, considered. Thanks, Ryan. The other thing is, uh, um, following up with what Councillor Pritchard said, uh, there was indeed one of these uh, pylons very close to where I live and it was taken down because at the time there were reports that these things were very bad for people's health and they actually caused cancer. Um, could we not take that into consideration? No. No, unfortunately not. That is that is outside of the, the planning process, similar to telecoms and masks there, um, whereas telecommunications masks, they're specifically listed in the MPPF that the planning process is not there to consider the health implications. It's outside of the planning system, unfortunately. Thanks, Ryan. Has anybody got any further <coughs> further questions? Councillor Maycock first. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, just reading through the residents, um, uh, basically what, what, what they've said about it. In the report it speaks about the lizards, the bats, but some of the comments have been about owls. I, I just don't see that in, the, in any of the proposed surveys. Okay, Ryan. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, that will be because the survey will focus on protected uh, species such as bats and newts um, and it's that we can only go on or I can only go on the specialist advice from the ecologist at the county council. Owls themselves aren't <coughs> specifically protected in the legislation I don't believe. Thank you. Thanks Ryan. You got anything further Councillor Maycock? Is that no that's fine Chair. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Rogers. Thank you Chair. Um, I know you might not be able to answer this question tonight but um, I've been to the site myself and um, I see the beginning of Swallowhurst very close to this piece of land and regarding the pylons could it be look, looked at back or you know for previous information why that particular piece of land wouldn't have been included with the Swallowhurst development because I, I've got this feeling that these pylons might have jeopardised the beginning of Swallowers at, at their development. Why is that piece of land still left where they've actually, where the road of Swallowhurst goes in, it seems to go around that piece of land off the Overwoods Road. 
Uh, that's my concern. That I've, I've, I've been twice to the site. I've, I left there this afternoon, and um, I've got a funny feeling with them pylons. You've got to work around. You know, you've got to build around them. Why wasn't the the land used before, or is it a set, or does the, that land not? Didn't it come under the jurisdiction of the Swallowhurst development? Thanks, Ryan. Uh, I believe it's different land ownership. Uh, the land wasn't allocated in the local plan, and from local knowledge and dealings with enforcement matters, um, the trees in between Swallowhurst and the site actually are under the council's ownership. So I think there is a difference in landowners as you as you move along that site. Thanks, Thanks Ryan. Chair. Thank you. All right, Councillor Rogers. That's, that's it. Thank you. Councillor Maycock, you indicated. Uh, that I was just going to clarify that, that it is actually it's private land, so Swallowhurst wouldn't have been able to get, encroach onto that. Thanks. Are there any further questions? Councillor Bailey. Just, is, is, is there a flooding issue on that, on that piece of land? No. Uh, it, certainly not known uh, the site is not within flood zone 2 or 3 um, and it's underneath the size limits uh, so the remaining land if you're not in flood zone uh, 2 and 3 you're in flood zone 1 um, and a development over a certain uh, land parcel would be required to do a flood risk assessment but it was under the thresholds for the environment agency for them to require a flood risk assessment thanks Ryan Councillor Thank Jay Yeah, you mentioned that it's not the land isn't allocated as green space in the local plan. If it's privately owned, then can it can it ever be allocated as green space if it's owned by somebody else? Brian, uh, that would be down to the uh, adoption process through the local plan. Um, the owner could potentially uh, call it in to be allocated for open space when the local plan was being uh, considered, but. There could be a number of reasons as well. That most, the obvious reason would be the electricity pylon. It might be something that we would look to avoid anyway, because obviously, the electricity statutory undertaker would always have an access right to get in there and maintain the infrastructure. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Ryan. Anybody else? Any more questions? Councillor Harper. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, it's just a, a, a little thing I've noticed on the the highways um, here where it says Staffordshire County Council Highways have raised a number of concerns primarily around the vehicular access to the site um, where it says um, the likely access point will be onto Overwoods Road where the speed limit is 30 miles per hour however it is very close to, we, to where the speed limit increases to 50 miles per hour and therefore it is likely that vehicles would be travelling above 30 miles per hour when passing the proposed access point to this site um, that sounds dangerous to me. Thank you. Ryan? Yep, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, highways, we've discussed that at length with the highways department. Um, highways requested that the applicant demonstrated on a plan that a vehicle visibility display of 2.4 metres by 160 metres in line with a 50 mile an hour carriageway uh, could be achieved, noting how it would interact with any trees um, alongside the site frontage. Um, a seven day speed survey determined the 85th percentile uh, within the vicinity of the site access, um, which may demonstrate that it cars are travelling at less than the 50 miles an hour uh, and therefore reduce the amount of visit visibility spare that was required. A speed survey was commissioned and found that the 85th percentile of speeds approximate to the proposed site access location were 40.9 miles per hour eastbound and 34.7 miles per hour westbound and that's based on a weekday average uh, and these speeds would have required a visibility spay uh, of a certain size which has gone back to the county council and that's the proposed visibility spay based on that seven day speed survey. So it's more than what you would require for a 30 mile an hour speed limit but less than a 50 it's sort of in the middle there based on the speed survey that the applicants have done thank you thanks Ryan Councillor Harper does that answer your question <laughs> thank you Chair uh, well yeah uh, percentages are all very well and good but it only takes one vehicle to be doing the wrong speed and then you've got a tragedy and um it appears to me that um, you're basing everything here on just cutting the trees back and to make it more visible. Um, 
I've got some serious misgivings about that. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Harper. Councillor Pritchard. Thank you, Chair. Uh, on the back of Councillor Harper's concern, uh, and it has to be a real concern, why would County Highways not suggest that they move the speed limit further out a little bit to slow vehicles down or give vehicles some more sl slowing space to enable the development, make it safer? Has that been suggested? Ryan. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I can only go on what the County Highways officers have advised me and um, there's been no discussion that I've been aware of about relocating the speed limits because it will come down to making sure they can demonstrate they can fit the visibility display in on the land and the only restraint that come up as part of that was that one of the trees would potentially block the visibility and um, so obviously that's based on the the speed information that's been submitted to the county highways offices thank you chair thank you Ron. Is that okay it, it, if i could then would it not be a, a, an idea to go back to county highways and say with regards to this concern yes we can fit a splay we can cut a tree down there still appears to be a speeding issue in that area and can we not get them to consider extending the 30 mile an hour towards the west to ensure that vehicles have adequate slowing time thanks ryan uh, thank you, Chair. I suppose uh, the reassurance for this is that, remember, this is an outline planning application. A reserve matters application specifically looking at the access is still to be received, and we will be consulting the County Council again at that point. Uh, and the, obviously this detail with the visibility display will need to be included in the reserve matters application, which we'll go back to the County on. Thank you, Chair. Thanks. OK. Any further questions? I've got one. Um, Looking at the overhead, the aerial shot, if we're talking about where the 30 mile an hour limit starts, where is it? Does Swallowhurst fall within the 30 mile an hour or the 50 mile an hour? No, thank you, Chair. No, the 30 mile an hour is almost immediately as you pass the access. Um, so the, the Swallowhurst is actually within the 50 mile an hour speed zone. So it's in between the two site accesses. Okay. Thank so you. we've got we've already got a road in the 50 mile an hour zone right okay any further questions right i'm going to move to debate does anybody want to start councillor goodall thank thank you chair um i think in these circumstances we we obviously have to be led a little bit by the um the local plan um, and I note that this is not within our local plan and while on the face of it it appears a quality development I do have some concerns about the, the position of the power lines um, and that perhaps more suitable um, development areas are possibly available um, so at the moment I'm a little bit I'm a little bit torn um, and I'm going to um, refrain from from judging this until I've I've heard some other committee members comments just wanted to uh, to put that out thank you thanks councillor goodall councillor jay yep thank you just coming back to my question earlier so I'll comment on it now um just because it's not allocated as a green space in the local plan doesn't mean it's not green space doesn't mean it's not used by people um and that's resident and then obviously we've got the wildlife aspects as well um so just because it's not allocated as such doesn't mean we should build on it and uh i think you know building there with all the houses around it and this massive pylon in the middle is just a fairly awful idea so i'll be voting against it thanks councillor wade i saw next yeah just going on what councillor jay says i'm not going to support this application I'd rather have wildlife, open space, residents are already using it, so I think we should keep it as it is. That's Councillor Wade. Councillor Bailey. Yeah, just follow, following on really, I think with the power line and the effect on the habitat and the green space, I won't be voting for it. Thank you. Councillor Harper. 
Again, I would like to just echo the comments of the previous uh, speakers. I think this is a lousy location to put a housing estate. Um, on the um, the fact of access, um, noise from HS2, uh, the highways problems, there's obviously going to be land drainage problems, it's got ponds and things on it. Um, but perhaps the most important thing is the loss of green space for local people. We are here to look after the quality of life of local people. And if this is going to improve the quality of life for local people, I'm a monkey's uncle. Um, this will be um, very, very unwelcome in the, uh, in the local area, I suspect. And um, I can't think of a good reason for putting it there. And that's without saying building around. Who would want to live underneath a, an electronic pylon? Who would buy a house? with that sticking in the back garden. It's beyond me. But um, quality of life for local people, that has got to be an imperative thing. And I suspect this is used by local people quite often. And um, we've, got to have, we've got to have greenery around our housing estates. We can't have a concrete jungle everywhere. And um, I, I can't see anything remotely positive about this application. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Harper. Councillor Goodall was next, I think. Thank, thanks again, Chair. Um, I thought I'd just chip in again. Um, I hear what Councillor Harper's comments are, and, 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 and uh, but just thought I'd put a, a slightly different tint on things. I guess um, clearly the, uh, the the piece of land is not could be not made public access. It's a private piece of land and could be fenced off. So. I don't think we can sort of assume that that's that's available for people to use all the while, um, and 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 I, I I look at the overhead view and see, in you know half half the picture is 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 green open land space. Um, again, I guess I'm not totally concerned about the or. Maybe just don't don't buy that the, the 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 traffic speed issue is such a problem. We we've we've got no evidence that there's a, a particular speeding issue along that that roadway. We've got a another road that's within that 50 mile an hour zone. Um, however, I'm still not. Uh, I'm still going to keep my judgment to myself at the moment. So, uh, so thanks for that opportunity. Thanks, Councillor Goodall. Councillor Box. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this seems an awful lot of land just for 14 dwellings to start with. But also, going back to the pylons, when they built Abbot's Gate, I moved down there when it was new, and they couldn't sell the houses for a long time underneath the pylons. That's all, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Box. Anybody else? Blimey, hands all went up. Councillor Jay, I think, first. Thank you. Just to um, counter Councillor Goodall's comment about half the picture is green space, which, which it is when you first look at it. But that's green. That's like green space within the houses, right? That's almost like a park that people would use, whereas all of this, apart from that looking like a field that's used for growing things, it's all crossing this main road to get to it, whereas that's in the middle of the estate. So I'll see that as more green space that's useful to people than, than this, would be my view. Okay, thanks. I lost track of who's and went up. I think I'll go for Councillor Rogers next. Thank you, Chair. Uh, regarding Councillor Goodall's uh, point about the speed, I can confirm this is a racetrack. Um, we've actually got the... Um, the rights there to do the community speed watch in that particular section. Um, also, the 50 mile an hour limit does start from between the um, the end house in Overwoods Road and Swallowhurst. Um, but it's got. I have already tried to find out off uh, Warwickshire County Council regarding the speed limit because the boundary is roughly going over the motorway. Um, 
it is day or night, whether I mean, I've been there at Trinity Road Junction and they've gone around the corner and it's just been towed down into Overwoods Road. Um, we've actually had the speed watch just the other side of Tamar and they're just, they're just coming at you. And it's not 30 mile an hour. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Rogers. Councillor Pritchard, I think, was next. Thank you, Mr Chair. If we look at the the overview, the, the site overview, you see the estate, you see the, the building site. To the east, there looks to be very big green open space, which appears to have footpath through it. Um, to the west of the site, on the opposite side of the road, there appears to be a uh, ploughed field or crop field there appears to be footpaths through those as well um, I personally wouldn't purchase a property with a carbuncle in front of it particularly an electrical one but it's that's my money uh, and it's for people to choose where they they wish to live if we decline this planning in principle the people may well lose the green space anyway because the owner might just turn around and say well I'm fencing it off so you've got no access to it anyway and the only people with access would be the electricity board uh, my, my real concerns sit around the numbers of properties that eventually will go on there uh, so for me we have to be absolutely solid and certain about numbers uh, the green space that e either side of the estate there's there's green space um, and then the ecology uh, I like newts I think they're great I don't think there's a problem with flooding up there because you go up the hill there to, to get there. And I, the nearest river is a couple of miles away. So there'll not be a problem with flooding, it's just the way the ground sits. Uh, maybe the makeup of the ground being a bit clay. All things to consider, uh, but if we decline this, will we find ourselves with a legal battle? later on. Cheers. Thanks Councillor Pritchard. Let's, let's just see if anybody else wants to contribute to the debate first. Councillor Greatrix. Mr Pritchard's last point, I don't think we should uh, take that into consideration here tonight frankly. We're here to uh, look at this plan and as far as um, fencing it off and being taken out of use for the public the green space would still be there, the, the habitat would still be there, the wildlife would still be there, and you wouldn't get the noise and pollution and everything from the houses. So even if it's, it's, um, we're not allowed, or this application isn't successful, um, the green space will still be used in, in theory by the local population. They will have the benefit of the wildlife and the lack of noise and everything and, and cars from this site. So I don't think we should t uh, take that into consideration either. Thanks, Councillor Greatrix. It, it is worth saying that we've got to consider the application that's in front of us, which is for 14 properties. Um, I accept that uh, the developer is within their rights to come back to us later on with an amendment, but for now we can only consider the application for the 14 properties. I'm just going to I'm just going to consult for a moment.
Right, we're going to just take some advice, please. And, um, you know, the concerns that have been raised in so far as um, uh, the, the open space is concerned. Um, however, um, I do think that the point that was made earlier on by um, the councillor does need to be given weight, i.e. this is a private piece of open space. It's not actually allocated in the plan um, and therefore it could be fenced off at any time. And of course what we have noted is that in terms of the objections that were actually made, um, they were primarily made by people who were using the open space. Um, and of course, um, it is actually up to the individual owner to take away that use. And um, what I think will be useful is for us to have a look at our open space policy uh, from you know which you will see that trying to actually defend any appeal um, if members you know do refuse the application may be difficult um, so I think it's important if we have a look at the policy Ryan's actually going to um, you know read out the relevant policy but you know clearly you know Chair, we're here to give advice and ensure that you know if members do move towards any refusal, they are fully aware um, of you know the potential um, you know weakness of such an appeal. Thanks. Uh, I, I think at this point it's worth saying that, you know it, it's good that we take some advice, uh, and I think it's, it helps everyone in the room uh, if we hear the policy. So yeah. thanks, Ryan. Okay, then, Ryan, do you want to do that? Okay, thank you, Chair. So the relevant part of policy EN3, which is in relation to open space, says proposals or development that would result, result in a loss of open space or would adversely affect open space will not be permitted unless it can be demonstrated that the strategic benefits of delivering the local plan outweigh the negative impact or loss. There remains access to good quality public accessible open space where alternative sites are not of good quality. Contributions to improving their quality will be expected and that the integrity of open space network and in particular its role in providing green links is maintained. And I think keeping in mind the proximity of Greenbelt, local nature reserve and indeed the shortfall of housing within the local plan. Thank you Chair. Thanks, Ryan. Um, Pardeep, did you want to say anything else? No, Chair. I think the important thing is that we just wanted to make sure uh, that, um, you know, any decision that members make is an informed decision, um, you know, based upon the need for members to provide um, a sound, clear, robust reason for refusal, uh, which we, can def we as officers can defend on your behalf at appeal. Right. Thank you both. Uh, Councillor Goodall had his hand up initially first, and then I've got Councillor Wade. Th thanks, Chair. I, I just wanted to just confirm with you, I guess, as Chair, this is this is outline planning permission, so it, it is the, the it may not appear um, in the future that there's this many houses on there. It could be it could be five, for instance. Alternatively, it could be. 20 I guess but this is purely on whether this site is suitable for for any uh, absolutely any right development I, I just thought that might be helpful for for everybody yeah absolutely right it is an outline application so we're not de making a decision on the detail so yeah you you are right when it comes to the detail there could be 10 houses on it there could be 15 there could be 20 or it could be the 14 that we see tonight um so yeah that is true so councillor wade i just i just like to say that i don't think we've just all just said it, oh it's open space now i think we, most councillors have all come out with an individual individual thing that they have a concern with i.e the roads the speed the the, the, the newts the ecology wherever it's situated the power line the, there's a number of things that has been said and just not one thing Councillor Maycock. Uh, just listening to all the points made, um, I'm just struggling to find a material one, bearing in mind that although it is seen as open space, 
it's not open space within the local plan uh, but also part of the local plan uh, with the open space policy that you've just mentioned speaks about connections to other open spaces which in this application it is stated that there are going to be links and cycle paths and footpaths to the local nature reserves um, so and another point with the housing demand um, although 14 houses isn't really going to chip away at that every little helps so I will be um, agreeing to this Thanks Councillor Makeup, Councillor Pritchard Thank you Chair given that this is an outline and given that we don't really have uh, a proper reason for denying this application because it is an outline not a solid application I think we would do ourselves a, a disservice if we were to decline this so I would move that we take the vote in favour of approval. Right, so that's that's a mover. Um, I'm just going to say what I think, just briefly. Um, there's, there's aspects of this application that I don't like. I'll be honest. Um, I don't like I don't like squeezing houses into that that space just for the, the sake of squeezing houses in. But then it's up to the landowner to to use that land in that way if he so wishes planning uh, dependent of course I do have concerns about the speeds on the road but and, and the fact that it will make a third entrance stroke exit within a fairly short uh, distance but equally we've heard that highways are satisfied um, they're satisfied with the displays the visibility display so I don't think we've got any grounds for saying no to this on the basis of highways I don't think we can say no on the basis that uh, it's an open space it's not a public open space it's private land so I think that is it is very difficult to argue against I don't like the pylon in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the development um, <laughs> Interestingly, I lived on a, a road once that when pylons were deemed to be a bad thing and all the, 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 it all kicked off over pylons in, in housing estates um, and it did affect the value of the properties at the time. But, you know, if people choose to live there, that's that's their decision at the end of the day. Um, so I don't like the pylon, but equally, I don't think we can use that as a reason for refusal. Uh, we've heard that from an ecology point of view there's going to be surveys and uh, if anything's found it has to be if it's a newt for example great crested newts have to be relocated uh, so we can't use that as an excuse to uh, re reason for refusal it's one of these where <laughs> I don't like it but I can't see a, a good solid planning reason to refuse it um, and it is an outline application, of course. Uh, I'm going to be bold. We've got a, a recommendation to move the application, uh, to accept the application. Uh, if you give me a second, Pardeep. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, we've got a mover. So, Pardeep, on the basis that we've got a mover, I'm actually going to second that we that we accept this application. <laughs> you were, you were beating me to it, Paddy. Um, and and it is. And while I don't necessarily like it, we're not here to make decisions on the basis of things that we like and dislike. It's it's for planning reasons and and according to policies. So. Uh, I won't say reluctantly. I, I think I just think there is no reason to refuse this personally. So I'm going to second it. It's, it's a reluctant issue, but we've got to go on. So we've got a mover and a seconder. Uh, so I'm going to go to the vote. 
All those in favour of approving the application, please. Five. Thank you. All those against? So that motion hasn't passed. Would anybody like to make an alternative recommendation? Councillor Bailey. I don't know whether we can do this. One of the things that I'm worried about is the habitat around there. And obviously, I know we can move newts around, but having cycle paths, etc., all that then further disturbs the wildlife that have moved, you know, that have been put through stress because of the buildings. What can we do? You know, what can we do with regards to that? Chair, I think um, earlier on, um, you know, some assurance was actually given um, that we've got a very clear and robust condition um, which is commonly placed in relation to uh, major developments, which, you know, refers to plans being submitted, surveys being carried out and mitigation measures, um, you know, being provided in consultation with specialists. So, you know, whilst I actually understand, you know, the concerns, you know, and they're very real concerns, um, you know, the, the good thing is this, that the planning system allows the local uh, planning authority, you know, strong controls to deal with mitigation measures. So, you know, clearly that would not be um, a good reason, in my view, you know, for, for, for re refusing the application. Thanks, Polly. Councillor Greatrix. In that case, why do we have a planning committee? Why don't we just box ticket on what the um, planning officer says? I think, yeah, I think that's perhaps a little bit harsh. I think in this case, this is an outline application and we're not, we're not determining detail. I meant in general. I think... I, I don't think we do box tick. I think there's been a few occasions recently where we've we've gone against officers. Not many, admittedly, but there have been some. So, and 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 the reason for the committee to, is to have these kind of debates. Um, but I'm still struggling to find a good, solid legal reason for refusal. Um, anybody else want to contribute? Any alternative recommendations? Councillor Wade. The problem I have is the the ecology with it. You know what I mean? It's okay saying you know, we can up, 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 up sticks and move the newts and the frogs and the toads and everything else, but none of us would like to be uprooted from our house and moved off a, half a mile down the road, would we? But I'd like to see the, the old picture of the ecology of what is actually living there and maybe... If there ain't much, may change my mind, but at the moment, well, where there's uh, a point, uh, yeah. you always get newts, frogs, toads, uh, and all the, the, the other ecosystem, what goes with it. Why disturb it? Yeah, I take the point. Unfortunately, <laughs> we're not going to know what's there until the surveys are done, and the surveys don't have to be done at the moment. Correct, Ryan, do you want to just come in there? Yeah, thank you, Chair. It was just to remind everyone that obviously it was recommended with conditions for additional surveys. Those surveys may find that there are no reasonable ecology on the site. We don't know what ecology is there because further surveys were required. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Ryan. Councillor Grey tricks his hand went up next, I think. Yes, thank you. Do you not think it would have been better if um, these surveys had been done had been done before this application came before the committee. Very likely. <laughs> and then we had a much clearer picture on what we were actually supposed to be either uh, uh, um, agreeing to or not. Uh, that's a reasonable point, Ryan. Why why yeah. are we in a position where we've not got surveys at the moment? Uh, thank you, Chair. There was a preliminary survey done and submitted with the planning application. That was consulted with the ecologist. That survey recommended further detailed surveys be submitted. So there was a preliminary ecology survey done that said it had potential for ecology, and that was their own survey recommending further surveys, which the ecologist has picked up on, and which is why a condition has been imposed for prior to commencement of the development. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Ryan. Councillor Jay? 
going to say we, we voted on it. We now can't feel like we're trying to just work ways to get everyone to change their mind, right? I know no one's got another, no one's got an alternative. Um, and uh, I think tonight we, we're all talking really as an outline uh, planning application. Do we feel that is a right s a space that's right to build on? That's essentially what we're deciding, right? And we've we've decided that. Whether, whether that's a, whether that's a fit into a rule or we need, you know, there's, we're in agreement with officers. That's what we decided. Pardon, we've voted on the original motion, and uh, we now have no alternative motion. So, uh, Councillor Pritchard, sorry. The, the the vote having been taken on the original motion, should we then propose that? this is returned to us at a future date when we have full knowledge uh, and a grasp of the issues that exist on the site with regards to wildlife ecology etc so you're suggesting a deferral okay part bear with me just for a second i've got the two i've got the hands part deep where are we at with this okay now? so where we're at at the moment is uh, chair is that um, um as as we're aware members in circumstances where there is a decision um you know against officer recommendation then chair as you have rightly suggested you are now looking for another motion and ordinarily that motion um is approval um you know subject to the members giving us good reason for um sorry a refusal <laughs> um now, let me just get my head around this, Chair. Uh, we've got a situation where we now need, you know, another motion. Okay, so um, seven people actually voted against. So that was a refusal. It's okay, Chair. I'm not <laughs> just trying to get my head around because what's actually happened is very unusually, um, you know, we've passed a motion and instead of moving to an alternative motion, um, you know, we've now just started um, a debate. Um, now, it seems to me that... Um, there's a lot of concern about the ecology um, on the site. Now, if I just quickly check with Ryan, Chair, um, you know, would it be um, would it be uh, an area which members might want to consider if further ecology information was actually obtained and then the application brought back if ecology, you know, remains, uh, you know, an important issue. If I can just check that, um, you know, on, whether that's uh, you know something that which would be helpful, because you know I've seen lots of concerns, you know, raised about the ecology on the site. Um, Ryan, yeah, so yeah. we want to get it right, Pardeep. So let's yeah. let's so, do that. Um, Ryan, you, that there was um, a first. Sir. survey and the survey said that a further survey was done um, and uh, chair if it is acceptable you know to members what we can do is if you can decide to pass a motion that the application is deferred uh, for uh, further information regarding um, you know the the conservation aspects and the surveys which were required at a later date to be brought forward so the members have more detailed information about the ecology on the site um, I don't know whether chair you know that's something that you know the members would be uh, amenable to right so listening to what's been said in the room so far that sounds like part of it's putting forward something that would be sensible to members. So would anybody like to move and second that, please? Councillor Bailey, Councillor Wade. So I've got Councillor Bailey would be prepared to move a deferral. Councillor Wade prepared to second a deferral for the purpose of uh, for the purpose of gaining further ecology surveys. So we've got a mover and a seconder for deferral on the basis that we want further surveys, Pardeep. Is that 
Um, yeah, that, that's fine. That. But, but I think it is important, um, Chair, that um, um, I do remind members that the deferral is only going to be, you know, for the purposes of dealing with that narrow issue in relation to con conservation. Mm. Um, and so, therefore, you know, when we come back, um, you know, it's, it's clearly it's a case where, uh, you know, the key issue to, to discuss, you know, will be uh, matters in relation to you know, conservation and conservation only. Um, so I think, you know, that's important to note. Um, you know, and, and clearly, Chair, uh, I think you know that, that that is one way forward to ensure that the further information is brought to you, um, uh, uh, in the hope that it gives comfort to members on the, the ecology issues. Okay, Councillor Bailey, you're still okay moving that. Yeah, yeah. and Councillor Wise, you're still okay seconding that. Right. So we now have a new, a new motion to vote on. So I'm going to go to the vote on that. We've got a mover and a seconder. So all those in favour of deferral for further ecology surveys? In favour? Can I have the hands up, please? I just said all those in favour. Yeah. All those against. Oh dear. No pressure. Right, my vote, my casting vote, so, I'll casting vote is six all. Yeah, I have, yeah. My casting vote, correct product. It's slightly unusual. Uh, so we've just checked the constitution and it is down to my casting vote now because we're at six all I get a second vote um, I know I voted against the motion however uh, for the good of the application and to satisfy oh, I think so that we can reach a way forward at a future meeting I'm prepared to go with the motion and on reflection and we'll get the further surveys. So that motion is passed. So the application is deferred. All right. Is that okay, Ryan? Subject to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so that's that's a deferral to, the, to a future meeting. So thank you all. I will close this meeting. Uh, Sally, sorry, before I close, I haven't closed the meeting yet. Yeah, yeah, I forgot that. I got carried away. There's another agenda item. Um, yes, Chair, that's, um, it's just, just an information item regarding the appeals that we've received in the last 12 months, the appealed decisions that we've received. Um, so that's applications that... We as officers under delegated powers have, have 
refused and obviously they've gone to an uh, appeal to the inspectorate. Um, we've had two applications for advertising um, hoardings, both of which are at um, the, the football ground, so very large LED digital advertising units. Both of those appeals were dismissed, so so basically they're they're not allowed. And then the third appeal was um, in Glascot Glascot Road, um, and it was for an extension to a property to um, become a housing multiple occupation, and that was also um, refused and dismissed on appeal. So that's a 100% success rate on the appeals on on those ones that were determined. Excellent. Thank Good you. work. Um, thank you for that, Sally. Uh, I will at that point close the meeting at 7.44. Thank you all.